Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu everybody. Welcome to the first online ICNA National Symposium. We are very happy uh, to see everyone on this blessed Friday. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, says in Surah Baqarah, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ uh, And when my slave asks about me, indeed, uh, certainly I am near. So at this time, uh, when we are forced to observe observe social distancing, uh, we should know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was always near and will always be near to us. And so for that reason, uh, for this symposium, we have selected the theme, فَإِنِّي قريب, that indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is near. So over the next day and a half, we will be joined by an array of speakers at the comfort of our homes to discuss the ongoing issues addressing the current COVID-19 pandemic and being in a Muslim household, uh, we may be able to benefit. Also, uh, we will be discussing how being a part of a uh, national uh, Islamic movement can better prepare us uh, for situations like this. We have uh, <clears throat> Dr. Muhammad Yunus. Uh, he has de dedicated many years uh, with ICNA, Islamic Circle of North America, along with uh, him being a successful cardiologist and an imam and director at uh, Mashidawa in um, Bonifay, Florida. Uh, so he's going to be talking to us about the path to Al Gothar and are we ready? And who wouldn't love to drink from the hands of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, on the day that we will all be looking to quench our thirst. So with that, we will have Dr. Muhammad Yunus. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Nahmuduhu wa nusalli ala rasulahi al-kareem amma ba'd. Fa'audhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أعطيناك الكوثر فصل لربك وانحر إن شانئك هو الأبتر صدق الله العظيم My dear respectable brothers, sisters, my sons and daughters May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessing be upon all who are joining this uh, symposium. And may Allah help us to benefit from his positive aspects and guide us to make it part of our life in order to achieve his pleasure and success in this dunya and the akhirah. In my talk, I'm going to focus upon Surah Al-Kawthar, which is a very short surah of the Qur'an and most of us we memorize it because very easy to memorize and very easy to recite in our salat. But in this surah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he gives us a great news, a good news. Particularly we need this kind of news in a situation that we are in and you have already heard about it the uh, trial and tribulation and, uh, and the uh, disaster we are seeing in the face of uh, corona pandemic. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the surah, and the translation is, Inna a'twayna al kawthar Verily, we have blessed you with al kawthar فَصَلِّ rabbika وَنْحَرُ So offer the salat and Sacrifice in the name of your Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the shan huwal abtar, indeed your enemy is the one who will be cut off, who will be the loser. So this this surah was revealed in Makkah when Prophet Sallallahu and his companions they were facing tremendous hardship. They were being persecuted for being Muslim. And, and sharing the message of Islam with their fellow human beings. So they were facing a lot of hardships and they needed this kind of glad tiding and good news. 
So what is really Al-Kawthar? There are three meanings which have been explained by the Sahaba Radwanullah Ali Majma'een in the light of the statements of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One meaning is that the Kawthar is a river of the Jannah. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu he reported that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said verily a surah has been revealed to me then he recited al-kawthar to the end of the surah then he asked do you know what al-kawthar is and they replied Allah and his messenger know the best and he said it is a river granted to me by my lord the Almighty, the All-Powerful in Paradise, in the Jannah, in which is great goodness. Its drinking vessels are as limitless as the heavenly bodies. It will refuse to allow one of the slaves to drink and the Prophet will say. So some of the people will come to drink and they will be refused. So Prophet ﷺ will ask on the Day of Judgment, O oh my Lord, O oh my Rabb, uh, these people are from my Ummah. But he will be told, you know nothing of the innovations or bid'at they, they started in the religion. And so they will be prohibited. But this is one of the warning also, that the people who make innovations, they will be prohibited from drinking from this kawthar. But this is one meaning, that this is a river of the Jannah. And there are many other ahadiths which support this meaning. The second meaning of Al-Kawthar is the How the Kawthar, or the fountain of Kawthar. It is reported that the fountain of Kawthar will be granted to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the, on the Yawm Al-Qiyamah, on the Day of Judgment. And this How the Kawthar actually is uh, provided its beautiful water by the river of the heaven and its drinking vessels are as limitless as the stars in the sky. This is a hadith reported in Muslim, Abu Dawood and Al-Nasai. And there are several hadiths confirming uh, the, the existence of this uh, how the Kawthar or the fountain of Kawthar. It is uh, reported that that day when it's going to be very, very hot and people will be very thirsty and there will be cries of Al-Atash, Al-Atash, which means we are thirsty, we are thirsty. Then the followers of Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Muslims will be allowed to go to the fountain and drink from this Hawdi Kawthar. One of the companions was asked that, have you heard about the Hawdi Kawthar? This is Abu Barza Aslami anhu. He replied not once, twice or thrice, but several times. And Prophet Wasallam has warned the Muslims that uh, those who make innovations will not be allowed to, to drink from the how they call through. Another meaning, the third meaning of this word al kawthar is that this is from kathra or the abundance. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted abundance of goodness to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in this dunya and also in the akhirah. And this al kawthar refers to that also. But of course that includes the river of uh, kawthar in Jannah and the fountain of kawthar on the day of judgment. But the question is, who is qualified to benefit from al kawthar on the Day of Judgment? And the second verse tells us that, that you establish Salat and do the sacrifice. And uh, so these are two very fundamental requirements for a Muslim in order to be eligible to benefit from this how the Kawthar and the river of Kawthar in the Jannah. But of course, it goes without saying that we have to 
to acquire other qualities like having the knowledge as the fundamental before even salat we should know the ilm which is required to practice the, the islam our religion in the best possible manner and to teach others as prophet sallallahu said khayarukum man ta'allama alquran wa 'allama the best amongst you are those who learn the quran and teach others and then perform all the righteous deeds which he sallallahu alaihi wasallam has taught us and we learn from our knowledge of quran and to give charity sadaqa or khairat so we have to do infaq fi sabilillah and then make tawbah and istighfar as part of our everyday uh, deeds so we should be repenting upon our sins and we should asking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as we all know he used to do tawba and istighfar every day several hundred times and he did not have any sins so we the one who has committed so many sins and we continue to do so knowingly or unknowingly we should be doing istighfar and tawba and we should be having the sabr and patience in the face of hardships like we are facing today and then we should rely upon allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for ultimate results of everything tawakkul ala allah which should be an ongoing uh, part of our deeds and we should achieve the state of heart which cleans our hearts of all kind of sins and evils and we should uh, develop taqwa for allah and through the knowledge and good deeds these are the qualities which are necessary in order to to be benefit from the kawthar in jannah and the kawthar on the on the yawm al-qiyamah and of course as this surah tells us establish salat in a proper manner uh, with proper khushu and khudu in the proper time as prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was commanded in surah an'am that this salat and sacrifice is all for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nobody else قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَا وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ وَبِذَلِكَ وَمِرْثُ وَنْأَوَّلُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to say my salat, my sacrifice as a matter of fact my whole life and my death is for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Lord of the Universe who has no partner with Him this is what I have been commanded and I am the first to surrender to Him so this is the attitude of a muslim the whole life from uh, cradle to the grave is to be submitted to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to his ahkam as fall in the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that's what makes us eligible to be in the ummah of rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and on the day of judgment then we'll be able to drink from his hawd kawthar and also inshallah ta'ala in the jannah from the river of kawthar and the last verse says in nashaniya ka huwa al-abtar this is again a great news remember these the verses were revealed in makkah when prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his companions were facing a lot of persecution and, and hardship and apparently there was no light in the end of the tunnel that they will ever come out of this as victorious but in that time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling them inna shaniya ka huwa al-abtar and shaniya uh, ka means your opponents the people who are today uh, mocking you and your message and putting you through persecution they are the one who are going to be abtar and abtar is derived from batar which means one is cut off we, we will have no following we will have no power left so this was a great news and this is what we also need you know in the face of all this uh, hardship which all of us are facing and also in addition to that the islamophobia which we have been facing for several years particularly since 9/11 and now we need this good news in nashani ka huwa al-abtar allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he is uh, on your side then there is nobody who can bring harm or can and bring any kind of uh, hardship So this is the prescription for success and also the way to how the kawthar and many other good news which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to 
to us through Prophet ﷺ. But let us then look at our situation. In, in spite of these good news which Allah has given to us in Quran and through the Sunnah Rasulullah ﷺ, what is our attitude? Unfortunately, when we look at our actions as individuals and as Ummah, we find that we suffer from a disease which is called in Quran as ghafla, as neglect, because of the love of this dunya, the, the hub of the dunya, and neglect of the akhira, and all these glad tidings which we, we read day and night, but we don't pay attention to that. So Allah subhanahu wa says in Quran, اِقْتَرَبَ لِلنَّاسِ حِسَابُهُمْ وَهُمْ فِي غَفْلَةٍ مُعْرِذُونَ Surah Al-Anbiya, verse number one that the draws near for mankind their reckoning while they turn away in ghafla in neglect. So it is only right for us to wake up particularly in the face of this disaster and calamity which, has, which is encompassing the whole globe today, the pandemic in the form of coronavirus and the death toll which keeps on increasing every day. We hear in the evening news that today so many thousand people died all over the globe and we are helpless in face of this uh, pandemic. This should open our eyes that uh, it is in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody has the power against the forces of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we should open our eyes and turn to Allah. And the death is very close. Nobody knows tomorrow he will have in his, uh, in his uh, uh, favor that he will live or she will live or we are going to be in our grave facing the questions of Munkar and Nakir asking us not how much we made and what assets we left behind they'll be asking us what is your deen and uh, who is your Nabi or Prophet and uh, who is your Lord these are the questions we have to face my brothers and sisters and are we prepared for that to answer these questions. Are we going to continue to remain in the neglect? So how we can remove this curtain of neglect from our eyes? This is very important and this is just a reminder to me and all of us. First thing is we should do Tawbah and Istighfar, remembering our sins and always doing Tawbah and Istighfar because once we do the Tawbah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turns to us with His mercy and Rahmah and he removes the hardship from us. This is the only way for the cure and removal of the dis disaster and calamity. And secondly, we should constantly remind ourselves of our death, which is approaching very fast every day and every moment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Surah Al-Mu'minun, that until the death comes to one of them, then he says, Oh my Lord, send me back so that I may do righteous deeds in which I've, I have left behind, but Allah, the response will be no. It is but a word that he speaks and behind them is a barrier until the day they are resurrected. So any call and request to go back will not be granted. So this is the time that we have so we should remember our death. Third thing is we should constantly remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to zikr of Allah. And this is the zikr of the heart, the zikr of qulub. And also the dhikr of lisan, this should continue and remind us about the warnings, about the glad tidings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu said, the one who does zikr is like a living person and the one who doesn't is like one who ha whose heart is dead. And the fourth thing we should do is be in the company of the righteous people. That's where it's important to be part of a jamaat or organization where we have righteous people who are engaged in all these positive activities and they remind us and so the ghafla and this uh, neglect is removed from our eyes. The fifth thing is staying away from the haram, whether they are ha the haram in eating or haram in actions, we should always remain away from it and doing righteous deeds. And Stay away from places which harden the heart and be in the places where people are doing zikr for Allah, like masajid, like the Islamic convention, the seminars like we are attending now. They help us to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remove the ghafla from us. Now, 
I like to share with you that this calamity of, of a pandemic, corona pandemic, it has reminded us about our death, that we are helpless before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In spite of all this technology and modern medicine, nothing can help when Allah's power is so small like coronavirus, which we cannot even see, Allah then put, puts it out, the whole world is helpless. And this is the power of Allah, this is the qadr of Allah, which He has determined before, and nobody can change that. Prophet ﷺ explained, Allah had written and ordained measures of the creation 50,000 years before the creation of the heavens and the earth. So this is the qadr of Allah, and we are all helpless before that. But we must learn the lessons. And the lesson is, فَفِرُّوا إِلَى Allah. Turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is all most powerful and all power belongs to him and do what is right in order to be saved from this disaster and the ultimate disaster is to reach our grave, to reach the Qiyamah without Iman and Amli Salih. That is the worst disaster than anything which we can face in this world. So therefore right thing for us to do in this situation is to develop our strong relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the source of all the power, who is the one who can give us salvation in these disasters. By learning about him, developing his ma'rifah through his ibadah, to develop the qualities of shukr upon his ni'mah, and develop the hub of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so achieve the highest level of our relationship. Our scholars have told us that there are four or five levels of relation with Allah. The first is Iman, that you declare the Shahada. Second is Islam, when you implement the commands of Allah and the Sunnah of Rasul And the third level is Taqwa of Allah, that you develop fear of accountability. And then the fourth level is Ihsan, that you go above and beyond your call of duty. And then the ultimate level is Ansarullah, that you help in the mission and purpose of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam of Iqamat deen establishing the deen of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And there are so many ways to develop this strong relation with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala through Quran, through Ibadah, through Nawafil, Zikr of Allah, Sadaqah wa Khairat, Dua, and ultimately hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then, last but not the least, I want to stress upon the relation with the Prophet and the love of the Prophet the hub of Rasul As the Quran tells us, awla bil min anfusihim. The Prophet is preferable and above everything else for the believers even above their own selves. And Rami Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من والده ووالده والناس إجمعين None of you can become believer unless you love me, that is Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, more than your parents and even yourself. And how, what is the meaning of this love of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? And the meaning is, فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورُ رَحِيمُ That you follow the command, the sunnah, beautiful sunnah matter of Rasulullah wasallam. then Allah will love you and He will forgive you your sins and Allah is the most merciful and kind. One time a companion of the Prophet wasallam, Safwan ibn Qudama, he says that I immigrated to the Prophet ﷺ and I said, O Messenger of Allah, give me your hand. So I gave me, uh, and then he gave me his hand and I said, I said, I love you. And he said, a man is with the one whom he loves. So if we want to be with Rasulullah ﷺ on the Yawm Al-Qiyamah and benefit from the Hawdi culture and we want to benefit from his river of kawthar in Jannah, then we must have the love of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and this love will come through his ittaba'ah, through his ita'ah, his obedience and following his sunnah of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
So this is what I wanted to share with you today in the light of Surah Al-Kawthar, that this is a great news from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all times, particularly in the time of this calamity that we are facing. And we must make ourselves eligible through adopting those qualities which are mentioned in Quran, Sunnah, Rasulullah sallam, through developing close relations with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the hub of Allah and the hub of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and hub of the salihin. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to benefit from, uh, from the knowledge which he gives to us and help us to, to practice that in our life. Allahumma anfa'ani bima allamtani wa allimni ma yanfa'ani wa zidni ilma. May Allah benefit all of us inshaAllah ta'ala and accept our good deeds, include us amongst the righteous and, and the true followers of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so that we benefit insha'Allah ta'ala on the Yawm al-Qiyamah and we drink from the Hawdi Kawthar from his uh, blessed hands and also insha'Allah drink from the river of uh, Kawthar in the Jannah insha'Allah ta'ala in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Aqulu khuli hadha wa astaghfiru li wa lakum wa lisaal muslimin wa astaghfiru inna hu al-ghafur rahim jazakallahu kulla khair ahsan al-jaza assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Jazakallah khair, Dr. Yunus, always enlightening uh, in your presence and very happy to see uh, that you're healthy and able to share uh, words of wisdom uh, with us. And I think one thing that I would want to just highlight from uh, what you had mentioned, many people right now are in that dark place um, with their thoughts that the Prophet ﷺ may have had when his son had passed away. They, they don't see that light of hope. Uh, at the end of the tunnel. But as the as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the surah to alleviate those burdens, may the surah alleviate the burdens for us to show that um, there is light at the end of the tunnel, that we should have a reason uh, to rejoice, inshallah. Uh, so unfortunately, we are out of time uh, so that we will un be unable to take any questions. But I would again like to thank you uh, for taking the time. Uh, and sharing uh, with us uh, words of advice and wisdom. Um, also, as I made an appeal at the beginning of the program, uh, please take a moment to go to www.icna.org slash donate. Uh, we did take a, a significant financial loss from having to postpone the ICNA convention. Uh, and this is not a complete replacement of it, but it is at least a way for us to be together during this pandemic and have our mashayikh share words of advice and wisdom uh, with us. So, Jazakallah khair. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.